Spurgeon's clothing. You'll see a full list at the cart that's at the North X. Also, we want you to be in prayer for something exciting that's happening in a couple of weeks, our Vacation Bible School. Uh, it'll be the first one in a couple years, so we're very excited. We should have uh, well over 100 kids uh, uh, joining us. A lot of them are unchurched, so what a blessing it is just to have them here. And thank you all in advance for your volunteerism and your spirit of service. Uh, we should have a very blessed uh, Vacation Bible School, so join us in prayer for each child that will participate. Now let's prepare our hearts uh, for worship this morning.
Remain standing, please, for the singing of the national anthem. As you're standing, go ahead and greet those around you this morning. So glad you're here in the house of the Lord on this wonderful day the Lord has given to us. If you're worshiping with us online, welcome. Glad you're here today. As you return to your seat, let's draw our attention to the screens or to your hymnal at number 698, God of the Ages.
standing as we affirm together what it is that we believe in, what our faith is, as we affirm our faith, reading the Apostles' Creed. It'll be on the screen for you. Let's say what it is that we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. You're actually welcome to stand and join us as we sing about the freedom we have in Jesus. to bring us liberty my sin and my rejection met your blood and my acceptance now I'm alive to bring you praise where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom Spirit of the Lord is there. 
Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Great music already today. Thank you for the choir and the band for bringing that to us. We know that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And that's what we're experiencing. That's what we're celebrating today and next Sunday. Uh, for our, our freedom services. Glad that you're here and, and a part of that. And I know that you have different concerns and prayer needs on your heart, on your mind today, and God wants to hear those. So I encourage you to, to lift those to the Lord as we go to him in, in prayer for just a few seconds. Always, especially during this time, remember our military. Remember those that are serving all over the world to protect freedom. Uh, remember our nation. We're one nation under God it takes all of us praying. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Spend a few moments in your quiet time with God. Then I'll lead us in our prayer together. Let us pray. God of the ages hear our prayers. God of grace and God of glory, hear our prayers. Almighty Father, as we come to you in, in prayer, come to you in this, this solemn moment, this quiet time, put everything else aside and just be in your presence. We pray, God, that as we worship you, that we would feel your presence where two or more are gathered, your promise is to be with us. So as we gathered here today and in our chapel with our Hispanic brothers and sisters, Lord, I just pray that your peace would wash over us. You would pour your spirit out upon us to remind us that we are yours. You're a good, good father. We are loved by you. We come to you, Lord, with, with heavy hearts and burdens, fears and doubts. And I, I pray, God, that your spirit would lead us to just leave all that here at the altar, the foot of the cross, to be reminded that Christ already carried that for us. And you will carry our burdens for us now. Help us to trust you more. Help us to have that, that closer, deeper relationship with you. You know our prayers even before we speak a word, but you long for that relationship. So we come to you in all faithfulness, knowing that you hear us. Our prayers do not fall on deaf ears. Search our hearts as we open them to you. We pray for family and friends, our church family. We pray for your guidance, Lord, with our, our leaders in the church, in our nation, in this world. And all of it, you have a great plan. A plan filled with hope. A plan filled with, with joy, with eternal life through Christ. So forgive us of our sins. Guide us and direct us by your spirit. And God, bless America. Bless us to be a blessing to others. Fill us up in this service so we can go out and be a blessing to others this day and every day you give us. All this we ask and we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you for the way that you give to your church. It makes such a big difference, not just in the ministries that we do here, but in the community and, and around the world. And there's different ways that you can, you can give to your church and to all the ministries that we do here on Sunday mornings in your pews. We do have envelopes. We have the, our uh, offering boxes at the end. As you leave, you can put them in that. Uh, different ways that you can give as well. You see on the screen, you can do it online. You can do it through your bank. You can mail it in. You can even text it in if that is your thing. And so just different ways to be able to give back because of what God has done for us. Let's thank him for our offerings. God, we lift our, our offerings to you today and throughout this week, and we know, Lord, that you will receive them and you will do great things with them. Multiply them to the works of your kingdom here on earth so that your message would continue to spread, so the gospel of Christ would reach all people. Bless the gifts and the givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
children and the children and the children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you, he is with you in the morning, in the evening, and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing. He is for you, 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 he is for you. Thank you so much. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the Old Testament, Psalm 33, 12 through 22. It'll be on the screen in front of you. As you able, I ask you to stand for the reading of scripture this morning. Psalm 22. Sorry, Psalm 33, 12 through 22. Hear these words. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save but the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our Lord, our rock, our redeemer. God, open our hearts, our minds, our very souls to hear your message to us today. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So a few Sundays ago, we celebrated Pentecost. We celebrated the, the birth of the church. 
been around for a long time. If you remember on that particular day, up to 3,000 or more people joined into the membership of what began the church. And so we celebrated that with a birthday, the birth of the church, Pentecost Sunday. Many of you wore red that day. It was a great occasion. I see a lot of red again today because in a week or so from now, we're going to be celebrating our nation's birthday, 246 years on 4th of, of July, and we celebrate that. A lot of celebrations, a lot of people get together and they have cookouts and they, they have a wonderful time remembering these things. We're going to hear more about this next week as well, but I can't help but think of this time period from when I spent a 4th of July for the first time in my life outside of this country. You know, we take a lot of things for granted as Americans. We definitely are a blessed nation. We are a people of blessing to be a blessing to others. And until you get away from that, and I know many of you have, I've traveled with you out of, out of the states to see different parts of the world, to understand it's the same God, but things look a little different when you're out of your comfort zone, when you're out of the feeling of being a blessed nation. Things look a little bit different. The people that we were actually serving with in Ecuador during that, that week tried to make us feel good, tried to make us feel more Americanized, so we had hamburgers uh, on, on 4th of July cooked in a wheelbarrow. They were the best hamburgers I think I ever had because it was something familiar, something we were used to. As a blessed nation, we like the familiarity of that. We like the feel of that. We like things to be a certain way. We are Methodist for a reason as well, that we like the method of things. We like structure. We like the way things have always been, sometimes to... A negative extreme. Many believe that we are one of, if not the most blessed nations on earth. You've done much traveling outside of America and you get to spend some time with people outside of America. They ask a lot of questions about America. They want to know about it because all they know is on TV or in the media. We are a blessed nation. We have been blessed in many, many ways. I know many of us have gone through hard times. I know many of us have struggled. We have, have suffered through many pains and, and lots of negative and down times. But we know we are blessed. We know that we have God with us all the time. It's never a question. Shouldn't ever be a question. We know God is with us. But could we be more blessed? Could we be more blessed? I'd say that we probably could if we could even agree with what we say in our Pledge of Allegiance that we're one nation under one God. We're really not. Liberty and justice for all, not always. But as I said in my newsletter article, this is not nor will it ever be a political message. It's just a good time for us to think about how blessed we are. We are a blessed nation. The psalmist reminds us how we can be and stay that, how we can be a blessed nation, how we can stay a, a blessed nation. It gives us at least three different things that we can, we can grasp for ourselves. Even at the beginning of verse 12, it says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So we keep God first. We keep God first. We know that, but do we do it? Do we keep them first? Do we keep them first in, in every aspect of our lives? Do we keep them first in our daily living, in our relationships, in our marriages? Is God first? So maybe it starts inward. Maybe it starts at home. Maybe it starts with us as, as individuals to understand just how blessed we are. Keep God first. Secondly, in verse 18, he says to fear or respect or love the Lord. 
The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, he said, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. King David says, depending on what version, what uh, uh, scripture part you're reading, 70 times in the Psalms, David says, fear the Lord, revere the Lord, respect the Lord. We look at that word fear, and we don't really want to think about it in that sense, that God's some big scary God waiting to punish us if we mess up. If that's the case, he'd be mighty busy, because we mess up. But he blesses us as well. So we fear, we respect, we love the Lord. And we know scripture says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. But to fear God is an awe, A-W-E, a, a, a respectful thing. To, to fear also, if we don't have God, what we end up with. It's a fearful thing. I don't want that. I want to have those blessings of God. I want to know that I'm, I'm in his will. I want to know that we as a nation are trying to follow after what God has called us to do and to be. To be that one nation under one God. We fear the Lord in a sense of understanding. And every, every uh, message I do for weddings, it says they have come together, this couple, in love and fear of the Lord. Marriage starts that way, understanding that with God all things are possible. That's the same in, in all of our relationships, to put God first and to know that with him all things are possible. We can do great things together as a nation, as a church as godly people, if we fear and respect and love the Lord with all that we got, every bit of us, every, every fiber in our body. And then at the end of what we read, verses 20 through 22, we are to put our hope in God alone. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help. He is our shield. We go to get help in too many different places, usually ourselves. I can do all things through my own strength is not what it says in Scripture. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. He is our help. He is our shield. In him our heart rejoices. Rejoices. For we trust in his holy name. Then he says, let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone. Where is your hope today? Where do you place your hope? Because if you place your hope first in humans, you're going to be disappointed. If you put your hope in things, if you put your hope even in plans that you made, things come up. Stuff happens. Plans get changed. But we know with God, he has a great plan for us, for our future. And it's a plan full of what? Of hope hope so we put our hope in God alone and the psalmist says if we can do these things if we can keep God first if we can fear love respect the Lord and if we can put all of our hope in God alone he's going to bless our nation for several weeks we had a banner out about saying that if God says if my people would pray if we would just do that and turn from our wicked ways he's going to bless us we are blessed. But what are we doing with it? What are we doing with this blessing? You have been blessed in so many different ways. Are you using it for good? Are you taking the blessings that you've received from God and going out, starting in your own family, in your own circle, in your own parts of the world, and spreading that blessing out to others? Because I don't believe your blessing is to be kept inside. It may be your blessing, but it's even better if it's shared. We have been blessed musically this morning, amen? amen? We have been blessed just as equally last week with music. It's just different this week. Something's more alive. Maybe it's a trumpet or a horn or something. Maybe it was watching people come in with those flags. Maybe it's a, a God bless America kind of theme that we have going on here. And it's beautiful and very talented. They have been blessed. 
and there's still time for you to join them. Starting this week, the ding <laughs> and what was the other one? The tone, what was that? The de tone deaf people, what was that? Yeah, no tones, they got a chance. You too can be a blessing. And if you can't sing, we just won't put a mic in front of you, but you still can be a blessing. But did you hear the music the praise team sang today? Amen was how that last song ended. Full of blessings. So you're going to leave here today in 10, 15 minutes or so. And what are you going to do? Is your really, your only goal is to hurry to the restaurant. Get there before some others. Is your only goal to get out of that tie today? Go home and take a nap. Or maybe, since you have encountered Jesus, you're going to share that with someone. You're going to be a blessing to someone. You're going to allow what's happened here today in God's house continue to live through you as you go out into this week as we prepare for 246th birthday of our nation and be a blessing to somebody. See, that's up to you. I believe God's done his part. I believe God showed up here today. It's up for, to us then to make sure this continues. To make sure that the songs that we've heard today about a blessing, that's what the song was called, The Blessing, perfect name, that we take that with us and we share this freedom that we have through Christ to live and to love and to forgive and to be grace, gracious to others, to be a blessing. So we ask God to bless our nation. We have ways to do it. Keep God first. Seems silly to say that to the church, doesn't it? Kind of singing to the choir. We know that. Are you doing it? Fear, respect, love the Lord with all that you got and not just on Sundays. And put our hope in God alone. Three pretty easy steps. We want God to bless our nation. Let's do these things. And let's be a blessing to others. Let us pray. God bless America. Bless our leaders. Those that are in position. And God, sometimes we think because we are not those people that we don't have a position, that we don't have a voice or a say, but we do. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Help me, God, to remember and help us as a church to remember to put you first. Put you first in all things to make sure Christ is at the center of everything that we do. Help us, Lord, to remember to love and to respect and to fear you. Put you in all and to keep you in all that we do. And Lord, help us, remind us to put our hope in you, for you never disappoint us. God of grace and God of glory, pour your power and your spirit upon us now. Bless our nation so we can bless others for Christ's sake. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you're able, will you stand and join me in our closing hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory, number 57 in the hymnal, or certainly look at the screens.
Now as you leave from this place today, but never from the presence of God, go in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You've been blessed. Be a blessing to others. Go in Christ's name. But before you do, the choir has one more song for you.